Ja. All right, we're in Matthew chapter 5. <clears throat> we're trying to get through verse 3. And we're going to do it to the glory of God tonight or fail, which we've done before. <laughs> All right, Roman, I mean, uh, Matthew 5. Here I go. And verse 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we were talking about the kingdom. Theirs is the kingdom. It is an issue of government. Um, um, and I, I put this down. If he has called us literally out of darkness and not just into light, but into his marvelous light or him as light, then that change expects, expect, expects us to show forth what honors him, him acceptably. And I guess that's actually a couple of scriptures I was thinking about when I did this. Keep your place there in Matthew 5, but so you can see it. Number one is 1 Peter 2.9. 1 Peter 2.9. But we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a people of his own. The word there really is, uh, in, the, in the King James, peculiar people, which I think fits this body. <clears throat> Pretty doggone well, yeah. Thank God we got Skype people, sane people, cool people. Um, uh, people of his own is actually the translation, but I'll tell you this, uh, the, it's used in the Old Testament in reference to being priest. When it calls them a peculiar pe people, it's the peculiarity of it is that they are priests unto the Lord. And we are priests, we are all priests, but we're not Catholic priests. <laughs> uh, well, some of you are, but anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Um, but, but as priest, what does that mean? It means by our spirit, we are offering Christ constantly by our spirit, soul, and body. We are offering Christ constantly as a sweet savor unto the Father. Um, many people want to be a priest. Well, I'm a priest. I'm a minister too. We, yeah, except for, you know, you're not called to be a pastor. You're called to offer Christ. Um, which we all are. Uh, so then it goes on to say that uh, ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So I guess the last part of that I said, um, he's literally called us out of darkness, not just into light, but into his marvelous light, or him as light, his marvelous light. That... Uh, uh, that chain, then that change expects us to show forth what honors him acceptably, the things that praise him. We say pra the praises of him, but it's really not a reference to just raising our hands and everything. This is talking about priesthood and offering what honors him. Um, <clears throat> all right. Let's see. Let's go, let's go back, but uh, we're going to Matthew, but uh, let's go to Matthew 12. <clears throat> Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. <clears throat> All right, so... Uh, if you cast out the devil or another kingdom, if you cast out another kingdom, another ruling thing in you, um, by the Spirit of God, then you can know that the kingdom of God has come to you because you, you're not going to cast it out except by another kingdom coming. I mean, you, you know, let's look at it like this. Let's, let's just take it out of the realm of what I just said and put it into the realm of deliverance. I don't know how many of you have done too much deliverance, but I've done more than I'd ever want to and do not particularly like it. But I have seen, and, and I'm sure you've seen this, where you cast a demon out of somebody, and maybe I don't believe in casting demons out, but anyway, let me just, I've cast a demon out of them, and they, they didn't 
clean the house, and then the Lord come in and live there. They didn't bring in another kingdom, and it came back, and Jesus said this, and it'll come back seven times worse than before. Okay. Well, that's explaining that if this is a kingdom thing, this isn't just a deliverance thing. This isn't a power, momentary spurt of power. Get up! You know, ah! and then there, it's like, okay, well, he cast me out, so I can't come back. Jesus said they could, and, and if they do, they're going to come back even stronger because they're going to know that they, that's their kingdom, and no other kingdom is stronger. I mean, it could cast them out, but, the, you know, so what is the deal? It's just like sin or something like that. Um, what shall we say? Shall we sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead? Okay, so, he, so that explanation is, uh, or our explanation is, don't sin, but if you sin, get forgiveness. Don't sin, if, but if you sin, get forgiveness. And, and do, it a, do it a bunch and keep forgiving and getting forgiveness and keep sinning, you know, almost, you know. No, don't change government. But here's how he says you change government. He said, God forbid. God forbid. If you're dead, then that kingdom has no more place in you. And then it says you're alive unto God through Jesus Christ. The life unto God that you have is through Jesus Christ's life. It's another kingdom. It's another, another government. Something else is governing you on the inside. Does that make sense? All right. So, if you cast out the devil, another kingdom by the Spirit of God, then you can know that the kingdom of God has come to you. Colossians 1.13 uh, says that we've been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son or... or the son of his love is the actual translation. If you have a Schofield Bible, it'll show that. Or if you look it up. You are delivered from the power of darkness, not merely spiritually, meaning the power, the power of that kingdom is actually still at work in you, but you've been delivered from it. No. You've been delivered from the power of darkness, and you are translated into another kingdom into the kingdom of the one that he loves. This is your rapture where change happens. Translated into the, and that's all past tense, by the way. And that's where change starts really happening, you know. So, <clears throat> well, so what we're seeing here is uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. They've, you know, they have changed. Truly, if you have that spirit, you have changed kingdoms. Okay, is that, you know, I guess I was kind of going away. To, but I mean, I hope that, you know, uh, and, and so it, uh, again, from last class, so it's not saying if, if you're poor in spirit, or if you're empty in spirit, or if you're not full of yourself, but you're, you have his life in you and his nature and his way of proceeding, then, then clearly yours is the kingdom. You've already been functioning in the kingdom because that's him governing in you. Yeah. It's, not, it's not a promise that you'll get the kingdom because you're poor in spirit. One day, you can get it. No, you don't. You clearly have it if you can do, if you have that spirit. <laughs> All right. Notice the wording of Jesus when he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is, not going to be, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Once the same government that government once the same government that governs Christ works in you, all else in the beatitude falls into place. Should I read that again? Once the same government that governs Christ, which, by the way, is the kingdom of heaven, as it were. It's, it's a government from above. And you, know, you do know that the actual word of being born again is, is actually in the, in the Greek to be born from above. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, 
Once the same government that governs Christ, the kingdom of heaven, works in you, all else in the Beatitudes falls into place. In other words, this first one is the most important. If we don't get that it has to be a kingdom change and a government change and that government is poor in spirit, it is not self-exalting. But it exalts others, it blesses others to its own loss. Then we don't get it at all. And anything else that comes up after that is just going to be a, a manifestation of, of um, well, another spirit. But that other spirit is always going to have self at the center, even when we appear selfless. Do y'all, anybody ever tried to appear selfless to somebody else to impress them that you actually were selfless? <laughs> <laughs> Shame on us, but that's that's us, you know. <laughs> and that's where we that's proof that we need Jesus right there. That's clear cut proof. All right, so let me meditate. I'm not meditating, I'm actually drinking. This first beatitude is the fundamental feature of the nature of of the Lamb. <clears throat> Fundamental feature. See, okay, let's try to, let's, Lord, help me, Holy Spirit, help me. From his point of view, he's God, Jesus. He's God, and he says, you know what? I am, you know, I will willingly, I will gladly go down, and I will get lower and lower and lower with because I know that the lower you go, the deeper a death, the greater the resurrection. Okay? So I'm going to do that, and that's our nature, and, you know, Godhead. That's who we are. You know, I can say, that's who we are. Let's do it. Uh, maybe not quite like that. <laughs> but anyway, and, and so he comes down, and um, there's all of this spirit, you know, around him that's always messing with him. There's the Pharisees and everything, and there's, there's the Roman rule that he sees just, you know, uh, ruling over God's people and all of this stuff. And he's, he is set to change everything. Remember the Logos, that thing that will set about the change of the universe. And he is set to change everything. And this is God. Think of the power. Think of what he could do. But he does what is him. And he doesn't at any point try to impress everybody, though the miracles impressed him. Uh, uh, you know, he would heal somebody out of lamb spirit, compassion. I'll take, I will take care of you. I will, you know. So he heals them. And they go, oh, I'm going to go tell everybody. Don't tell anybody. Okay. Lamb did it. And lamb wants you to <laughs> let me stay lamb. You know. And, but we're going to go, oh, you know, God did a great miracle for me. You know? And he, so he sits down on a hill to begin his ministry. And it doesn't talk about one thing about conquering or doing great things or the wonder of being free or all of that because Everything's going to come out of that selfless spirit. He doesn't, you know, he knows, he knows exactly what's going to stir their, their fallen blood. And so he avoids saying stuff like that. Okay, let's talk. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. And they're going, well, this ain't very interesting. You know, give us something to, you know, we've got the Romans here, we've got these priests, and 
stuff and they're doing stuff wrong, man, you know, give us something that'll do something. Okay, I will. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And he, he stays true to that. He stays true to that. Because he's true to himself. He's true to himself. So I, I said that this first beatitude is the fundamental feature of the nature of the Lamb. Because he knows that in the end, when glory comes, it will come to him because he wasn't seeking glory, that he did it genuinely from his heart for their good, to what, regardless of whatever degree he suffered. And that, if anything, it's honoring selflessness. We go, oh, you're the guy, you're dead, you're the, yeah, you know, instead of worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered, see. And so there's, so much of the time we're devoid, we, we have the right words, maybe the right, but we're devoid of the right spirit, and he knows the right spirit, and, and we don't, so we think everything's, you know, probably doing good, you know, blessed be the land that conquered. But they didn't say that. They said, blessed be the land that was slain. And that conquered by selflessness, by not trying to conquer. Everybody else wants to come and destroy Rome or, or the the, the corrupt priesthood or all of the things that in a certain sense we still got going on right now, you know, right now. Same stuff. Jesus, you failed. You know, you failed, Jesus. Everything, this is the same crap that they had. Corrupt government, corrupt this and that. All of this is wrong. You've done nothing. Wrong perceptions on our part will mess it up every time. What if Judas, you know, I was thinking about this. What if Judas was sitting there and he goes, he goes and he's, he's thinking, you know, Jesus is getting a little off with this laying down his life stuff and, you know, all this kind of stuff. He's always giving everything away. That's why I'm stealing. Remember he had the bag? That's why I'm stealing. I'm just trying to save a little bit for us so that we can live for God, for God's sake, you know? And, and uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to get his attention, and I'm, not, I'm just saying, this is my weird mind, okay? So y'all just hang with me, you know? I'm not saying this is the way, to, but I'm, I, I, I know how humans can think sometimes. So he's going, I, so, you know, I, we just need to get him back on the right path, man. We need to have some victories. We need to get some notches in our, under our belt on this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go talk to the Pharisees and everything, and they're going to come, and they're going to scare the fool out of him and get him, you know, get him using his power, get him, you know, da-da-da, because I know he's of God, and I know that God will deliver him because I believe he's of God, and because I believe that God is a God of power, God will not let this happen. And so he denies him, and he get, gets his money, and they come to take him away, and then all of a sudden he's on the cross, and he's dying, and... Judas, maybe he's going, oh my God, this got out of hand. I thought, I thought God would deliver him. I thought that God would, you know, because that's the mentality. God's going to deliver. It's always about deliver. Anyway, can you see my weird mind at least? Don't look anymore, it'll hurt you. <laughs> but I was just, my, my mind was running through that. How He goes and commits suicide. What if under a wrong mentality of 
why Jesus came and the understanding of power and the understanding that the way, the way of God is victory and conquering all enemies and that. And, and in the Old Testament, you had that. But there are, trust me, there are explanations for that. And I'm, I'm not going to go into all that right now. But now when he shows up, he says, that was, you know, Old Testament, everything, that was a representation, not a full picture. Shadow. Shadow's pretty bad. It's not going to show you all the detail. It doesn't even show you anything except an outline, basically. You don't get any detail. So then he says, so I'm going to come down there. And I'm going to come down there. It's not going to be an angel. It's not going to be this. It's not going to be that. I'm going to come down there. And I'm going to go, this is what your God is like. You know? And he says, but beforehand, I'm going to try to prepare you. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the hungry. Blessed are the mourners. You know, I mean, just, and he starts out, this is him, this is going, this is it, this is, you know, I thought this was, you know, can you see Judas from the start? Wait a minute, that can't be what it's about. You know, and I believe in a God that'll, so I'll put him in a little danger and we'll, and we'll see God do a great victory. And then everybody will know. And then the great victory turns out the Son of God is... God's own son is slaughtered and he has no understanding of this way or thought. And it's just like, oh my God, what am I? I thought you were going to... Ah, and then he goes out and hangs himself. I'm not even saying that's what happened, okay? I'm saying that's just my weird, weird mind. But is it possible that we could think that way? That we could think it was all about something other than a lamb being slain or a nature of God like that and that all we could see was that, you know, he'll do a great miracle. He'll do a great deliverance. He'll do a, you know, and he's going, I don't want to just deliver because I know that person isn't going to change kingdoms. The first and last beatitudes show that you are to be governed by something different because they point to the kingdom. So, back to Roman, I mean, Matthew 5. <clears throat> Verse 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, let's see. And then verse 10. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So the first and the last. Of, of the Beatitudes. The first and the last of the blessed, the happy are you. This is when you know you're blessed. <laughs> Isn't that funny? This is when you know, blessed are you. This is when you know you're blessed. When you're poor in spirit. When you're hungry for, for God and not just Christian. And therefore, you know, we glorify hunger because we only define it as a spiritual desire after God. But if, we, if we're going to use the word hunger, you have to look at emptiness and lack. See, we don't, we don't understand it because we don't have hunger in this country the way they do in Africa or somewhere. Or at least we're not aware of it. But, you know, and we say, man, oh, one time I was so hungry. Oh my God, I was dying. I skipped breakfast. You know, or something. I don't, I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm just trying to make a point. You know, I didn't say I'm not an idiot either. I am. <clears throat> but, I, but I am trying, there is a point in what I'm trying to reach in there. A real hunger means a real lack, but not just a lack of God. It actually has God, but it wants him beyond what it can taste, what beyond it is assimilating. You know, you can, you can go to the fair and be there from the sun up to sundown and eat cotton candy the whole time. <laughs> and maybe if you eat enough, you'll, you'll feel full. <laughs> Probably I'll end up over there. But anyway, <clears throat> um, but it's not satisfying a hunger. And, and it fills, but it doesn't fill. We are filled with stuff. What did, what did the scripture say? That we're filled with things that do not profit. <clears throat> and to and see that's one of the reasons why we're going through the Beatitudes <clears throat> that's one reason why we're doing it what we're doing is we're comparing law with lamb and we're going to see in some of these more clearly this contrast of law and lamb and Jesus is from the get go introducing his mind. It's not about victory. It's not about feasting and feeling full. It's about emptying yourself. And I'm jumping ahead and I shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> it's about emptying yourself so that he can fill you. So that he can be what fills you. See. That's that's his goal. That's his goal. All right. So imagine if that's his goal, but, but all of us, me included, all of us, we're, we, are, we are full of, um, of different things. We are full because we get our fullness and our full, full, fullness, fulfillment from ministering. Being in ministry, being needed. I'm needed, you know. Okay, well, everybody wants to be needed. I, I understand that. I'm not putting that down. I'm trying to show a contrast of being filled with him and, and genuinely emptying yourself and not filling yourself so that this hunger will drive you to him. And I've, I'm sorry, but I've jumped down <laughs> to verse 6. But these are, these are dynamics <clears throat> that can't really be understood until we've been, by God, put in a place where there is this lack and, and we realize that that's not the devil. There's an emptiness, but we realize that's not the devil. I mean, Jesus emptied himself. Kenosis, anybody familiar with that term? He emptied himself. Well, that wasn't the devil. Oh my God, I'm empty. I had all of this power and all this God stuff. See, we call that God stuff. He says, no, God is lamb stuff. See, he never said eat God stuff. He said eat the lamb. And he didn't just say the lamb, let the lamb be killed for you and put the blood on the doorpost and then you'll be saved. He said eat the lamb. I mean, he didn't have to add that. You know what I mean? He say, well, well, at least it was eat the lamb with chocolate pie. No, eat the lamb with bitter herbs. What? Yeah. Yeah. Can you handle this? Yes. 
Put the lamb in you, and you can handle the bitter, bitter herbs. You can't. Now the Jews don't at Passover don't eat the lamb. They don't have lamb usually. It's an egg. Yeah, it's an egg. <laughs> it's an egg. It's a boiled egg. <clears throat> and so now all they do is eat a boiled egg with bitter herbs. The lamb's the only thing, you know, that's like that's like in the book of Revelation. It says, who can open the seals? And of course, we're all going, yes, open the seals, Lamb of God. Yeah, open the seals and let the glory come. Oh my God, are you crazy? The Lamb will open it and then we can handle it. If you open it, it's Pandora's box. Only the, just leave it alone. <laughs> let it alone until the Lamb shows up. Same thing with the Passover. An egg ain't going to do it. Eat the egg and then eat the bitter herbs. And you're going to go, this is bitter. This is yucky. This is, why are we eating bitter herbs? This is the devil. The devil ordered bitter herbs. No, the Lord did. But he also told you to eat the lamb. Yeah. <laughs> See? He's got, there's a order to all of this and there's a spirit behind all of this and it's not just about well i want to be a, a what do they call it a something jew a, a born again jew but it's messianic, messianic jew well it's messy all right <laughs> hey i have every right to talk okay because <laughs> i you know german jew here <clears throat> And, and, and go, well, you know, I'm a Messianic Jew, so I'm going, to, I'm going to join with them in the Haggadah. We're going to go through the Haggadah during the Passover. What? That, you know, just eat the lamb? Just, you know? And, of course, it's not talking about still kill a lamb. And eat that. It's talking about eat the lamb. No, I don't. I want to be a messianic Jew Christian. <laughs> There's another <laughs> completed Jew. That's what they call. It. There, that's it. Completed Jew. Randy, your your last name is German Jew. You're Jewish. Why don't you ever go to the Holy Land? Well, I'm too busy going to the unholy land. <laughs> You know, I, you know, I don't want to go to the whole, I was, you know what, I was told, <clears throat> what was it, I was told, I was told that I wouldn't be able to go. That when we were in Cuba that time, one time, we were there many times, <clears throat> I was there with a brother, it was, uh, the, it was the guy who was the pastor of the church Doug went to in Nashville, and we'd invited him this trip. And we're standing in line at the airport to leave Cuba, and he said, Why, you, know, uh, uh, you, you know, what you were sharing is really good. You should come with me to Israel and share with, with the Jews. What's funny is he didn't know, you know, I, that there was any of that. He just, yeah, I, th I think what you have to say would really affect them. <laughs> and I stand there with my passport, and he said, here, let me see that. And he looks at it, and he goes, they will never let you in. They will never let you in. I said, why not? He said, well, your passport, you, you've been to Cuba, which is communist. You've been to Nicaragua, which, you know, had become communist by then. You've been, you know, all of this, this stuff that they, they saw at uh, so many places. That they, uh, even, even Ireland at that time, because, uh, sorry, Irish. But at that time, you know, it was like a, yeah, you know. <clears throat> and, uh, 
And, um, and they said, you could, you could never go. And I went, oh, no. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I said, you know, praise God. There's, God's got people over there. That's fine. That's wonderful. You know, Paul didn't go to the Jews. <laughs> we wouldn't even be saved if some, you know. Anyway, I don't know why I even took time for that foolishness. Um, so the first and last Beatitudes show that you are being governed by something different because they point to the kingdom. So we looked at that. Theirs is the kingdom. Uh, verse 10 also. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom. Okay. So... How do you get that Alpha and Omega there in the Beatitudes? You know, the first and the last Beatitude. Theirs is the king. They, they've already got the kingdom. How do, you, how do you get that? How does that become solid in you? Number one, you're poor in spirit or you're emptied of your spirit so that you're not full of yourself, so that you're full of Christ and his nature, which... He became poor that we might become rich. Gosh, I don't know if I should. I should end with this little thought. Um, <clears throat> you know, there are a lot of people that. Um, I, I, let me just put it like this. I used to know a minister. And he said, uh, I only read the Gospels. I don't, I don't read the epistles. I don't believe in that. I just follow Jesus. Some are Jesus and Paul. Da, da, da. But I'm, I just read that. <clears throat> and besides, Jesus is completely different than Paul. Jesus talks about peace and love and da-da-da-da. And Paul talks about dying and death and you know giving yourself and all this kind of stuff and and uh, and you know and I remember thinking about it and I and you know you may not be aware of this but there are some people who go well you know Paul like started preaching like another gospel than Jesus I mean if you really look at it, it there is a very very different thing there and I just asked the Holy Spirit, you know, well, what's up with that? Because I don't know. I ain't got a clue. I'm, I'm as big an idiot as anybody. I just need the Holy Spirit to, to guide me and to show me. And he said, well, Jesus is, is outlining all of this, but he's not putting pressure on you or whatever because he's the lamb and he's not going to do that. But Paul comes along, he sees Jesus in this nature, and he goes, people, we need to be doing the same thing. This is what we ought to be doing. He's not going to say this. I'm going to say it. You know? And you realize God had Paul there. He, he went, I love you. Because he's, God's not going to declare himself. And so Jesus is like peaceful and I'll die for you. And, you know, everything's good on that front. And Paul comes along and goes, okay, party's over. We're going to start taking up the cross. We're going to start bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus. And we're going to bring him glory the same way that he brought to us. So that any time, what spurred this was the thought of the scripture that says that Jesus became poor that we might become rich. Okay. So Jesus became poor that we might become rich. So what's the basic attitude? Well, praise God! I, I'm going to be rich! Jesus wants me to be rich! This is his purpose and his plan for my life! Call me Donald Jr. <laughs> yeah, I don't know which Donald I'm talking about. <laughs> Paul comes along and goes, hold up there, Skippy. <laughs> There's more to this gospel than just him blessing you. We're supposed to be conformed to that same image. This is, this is what we're meant to be, and he's not going to force it on us. 
he would like for us to be after his kind. Amen. He would like for us to be bride. He would like for us to, to love, you know. You know, it's been years now, but I remember when the transition happened for me. And after uh, many years of seeing the Lamb in the Scripture and by the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> one day it sunk into my pores. That's the only way I know how to put it. It just sunk into my pores. And I, the only thing, it was like a, everything became real narrow at that point. <laughs> Y'all can see how narrow I am on, on the Lamb. It did. It became very narrow and very clear, but very narrow. And and uh, and I realized that that lamb and the way that he is is this was me. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. That 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 one hanging on the cross, or the slaughtered lamb on the throne, or that that was it. That's what I'm in love with. This is the truth now. I'm not just jiving here. I mean, I saw it to such a degree, it just infiltrated my DNA, and I went, I love that. I love that Jesus. That's the Jesus I love, and that's the Jesus I'm going to give my life to. And that's my definition of beauty. Uh, no, no, I mean, we say that, no. I mean, that's my definition of beauty, period. That's where I see beauty. You can see commitment somewhere else, you can see this or that, but that's beauty, and when that shows up in his body, that's beauty. See? So then, he's got one after his kind, and he calls it beautiful. Oh, wow. So the father looks at Jesus and says, I call that beauty. And that changed everything for me. I cannot tell you. And I've never shared that before, but I, I will never forget it. And I can't forget what I see with my eyes and what I see with my spiritual eyes. I cannot ever forget it. It's, it is so much a part of me that, that I can... I can spot fake and real really easy. I can. And I can spot beauty. I can spot beauty. And, but you see, that lamb is in me. So I can't act any difference between fake and real. Does that make sense? You can't really do that because you lay down your life. So you don't, you know what I mean? And you go, why did she, you know, I've, I've had, well, I remember when I first got saved. Here was my words. <laughs> what is it about me that made Jesus die for me? What was it that was so special about me that made Jesus want to die for me? Well, nothing. Okay, nothing. There was nothing beautiful about you, and the proof is what you just said. <laughs> you know, this, is way, this is the way the Father talks to me. <laughs> you know, it's rather shocking, but, you know, you get used to it after a while. All right, what are you going to say? You know? <laughs> he's good. <clears throat> you know, I'd swear he's a Texan if I didn't know better, but anyway. Because <laughs> he shoots so straight, <laughs> but but it's good for me. I mean, and he's regularly. He he did just last night. I think it was. He just bam. What was it? Oh, I wish I could remember. I, I oh, I got part of it, and I can't remember one little part of it, <clears throat> but it was, oh, I'd, I had watched something that had, sh had shown me that some, uh, in this story that this person had gone through incredible, terrible stuff. 
And I got up to go to the bathroom, and this, my thought came to me, well, you know, Randy, you really haven't done it. You, you haven't gone through anything. You really haven't gone through anything. Not really, not at all. And, <clears throat> you know, you can go many directions in your own mind with that. You can go down or up or, you know, you can, <laughs> there's all kind of directions. And he said, it's not, it's not what you go through, it's how you go through it. That was the father's voice. It's not what you go through, it's how you go through it. He says, and if you can go through what you're going through now with the lamb, you'll probably, probably be able to go through stuff like that. Does that make sense? That if it's being worked in you on a daily basis and you're living it and you're being put into situations and you're regularly responding with Christ. I mean, I heard his own, it was more than my voice, it was his voice. <clears throat> he said, I don't have to put everybody through the most horrible things. <clears throat> Some of you are thinking, well, why did he choose me for that? <laughs> Well, you, you know, it's the same deal I came up with. You, you haven't really gone through anything yet. And he, that fatherly voice, so special, said, it's not how much you go through, it's how you go through it. And he said, if you're, do, if you're going through it now by my son, there's a good chance you'd be going through it by my son in the deeper, darker things. <clears throat> so I said, let's go with that. Don't bring anything else. <laughs> let's just go with that one. <laughs> just say, stop, don't hold your hand, you know, from Isaac. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, yes. Isaac's going. Thank God. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much that you are constantly not letting up on us because you want your son so much, because you desire beyond anything that we could imagine. You desire beauty. You desire the beauty of this son. And, and you know that that beauty shines brightest when it was first ashes. And that going through the ashes is what makes it beautiful to you. And I thank you. I thank you. I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. And I love your nature and I love your way. I sing about it and I write about it and I preach about it only for one reason, because I love your nature. I love how you are, Jesus, and I want to be after your kind. I want to be conformed to your image. We do. We in this place and on Skype, we long after you. Lord, go ahead and give us that deep hunger instead of just a desire. Go ahead and give us that deep hunger. And Lord, and let part of that hunger be there, not just because of you, but because of us, that we quit putting cotton candy into us. And we decided we're going to hold off until you fill us. Blessed are the hungry, you said. You'll be filled. So we're, we're looking to you. We're trusting in you. We're desiring you. And only you can do it, but <laughs> you're, you're the one that we have our confidence in. So thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your son. Thank you for the spirit of God. Thank you for being our God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.